Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and for today's video, it's kind of a long video, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, customizing your Android device. More or less on the side of just like, you know, modifying your Android phone, uh, root, custom recoveries, custom ROMs, the whole shebang. As it, it, it was a great time. At least in my opinion, it was. Now remember, this video is subjective, so this is just basically how I feel. This is not like anything that's stating facts or anything like that to that extent. But I have to say that, you know, uh, way back in the earlier days where everyone was rushing to get their Android device to run in tip-top shape, uh, one of the most sought-out ways of doing it was modifying your Android device. And since Android is open source, which means that any developer out there could take the source code files of Android and kind of build their own version of Android, uh, made it that you know you could take a phone that was technically in bone stock performance, kind of weak, and really kind of get you know get it going. Um, back in the day, basically, you know, uh, most of the phones that I went after or sought after, you know, because they were they were within my price range, was. Um, budget devices and mid-range devices uh there was only one that was technically considered a flagship well two of them that were but most of most of the time it was done with low budget phones and um of course myself you know trying to get the best performance out of the phone and get more things done with it and having more space in the phone than what it came with uh, meant that i really had to get in there and really just start modifying these things and um, of course, you know, shout out to XDA developers, shout out to SDX developers, shout out to all the ROM devs and the Android enthusiasts out there um, for providing tutorials and stuff like that on websites on how to do these things. But during that time, there wasn't a lot of uh, YouTube videos that were really kind of discussing that. I mean, the go-to person for that realm was Max Lee on High on Android. Uh, but there really wasn't a lot of people that was showing like the budget devices and how to how to work around with them and um so i began uh, making uh youtube videos and they weren't the best quality youtube videos i didn't do a lot of editing to them it was just basically point shoot and upload type videos and um so that's what i did was kind of show people like how to do certain things with specific phones that i had like um i had the um the samsung intercept which is here on screen right now and uh what i did to remove uh, bloatware apps to free up space and therefore you had more space on your device um from there it just got you know like to the point where i just wanted to kind of show modified versions of android that were done by um, at-home developers and attic developers in the basement developers and uh began just looking for these uh tutorials and and downloading the rom files and flashing the rom files onto the phones and then showing them like what sets them apart from stock android what was it that they do that was completely different that was the idea and also just to kind of show that you know older devices that were no longer supported would continue to get support and uh, that was through developers I think the developers don't get a lot of recognition and especially today since Android has grown and added a lot of features that we used to kind of just implement ourselves back in the day even today developers are not given much recognition um, the hard work that it takes them to just sift through and just kind of build these custom ROMs and make sure that these ROMs are safe for use for anyone that wanted to download it and install them on their device. Of course, having a group of people that would actually beta test these ROMs was, you know, something that we saw a lot of back in the day. And I'm not sure that there's a lot of them now still left today doing them, but, um, you know, it was... it. it, it it just yeah it, it was a lot of hard work and the thing about it is is that none of them none of them charged for this and of course obviously because android is open source it would be against the law for them to charge but you know no one ever attempted to have to try and do that uh, everything was always given out for free so if you wanted to have a modified version of android on your android smartphone and there was a custom rom that was built for it then it was there you just installed it on your phone and just boot up your phone and get it going um other than that too you know like i said uh, one of the craziest things was keeping your device uh in the loop so even if you didn't have support anymore there was a dev who basically built 
uh, you know, a, a updated version of Android with a custom ROM for your device, all you had to do is just look through XDA and you would, you know, you'd find it. But then there was also different ones too, like MIUI, which took the best of uh, both um, iOS with uh, all apps on the, on the display, no app drawer and stuff like that, and kind of spliced it with Android with the modifications and customizations that could be done. Of course, some people thought it was blasphemy because the iOS versus Android wars was very intense then. But, um, yeah, it, it, it was still fun to use these different ones and to just kind of just kind of see people's take on what they felt Android would be like for them. It was a great way to uh, for one to express themselves, um, to see what kind of versions of uh, Android they can come up with, what types of features they would build into the custom ROM that would you know, be useful features that weren't uh, present in the current stock version of Android. It was really awesome to kind of see that. Developers just have a great mind for this, and and, and uh, the best part is, is that all of us, you know, uh, Android enthusiasts, we won. We won only because of, like, the certain things that we would get. And there was a custom ROM that basically nearly fit what you needed out of a smartphone. There were different types of custom ROMs, you know. Um, Cyanogen Mod, one of the most famous names in, in custom ROMing, uh, even at one point was picked up by OnePlus to be the operating system on OnePlus devices before OnePlus switched to Oxygen OS. Cyanogen Mod was it. And Cyanogen Mod was like, it was a group of developers and they were very skilled at what they did and, and kept most of the major player devices in, in loop as far as getting, um, you know, Android, uh, the, the current version of Android. It, it, was, it was an amazing thing to see. And um, of course, there was a uh, you know AOSP uh, built ROMs, and from there, um, basically a group called AOKP, and then you had uh, Paranoid Android, which was another group of developers that built uh, custom ROMs for various popular devices at the time. And when they unified together on projects, that we got what was called Pac-Man ROM, which you know Pac-Man PAC standard for um, Paranoid Android, AOKP, and Cyanogen Mod. And they would take the best of what they implemented into their versions of Android and splice them together into one, which was actually pretty good. But some other noteworthy custom ROMs, there was Jelly Bam, um, you know, there was uh, MIUI, um, you also had uh, Dark, uh, Dark Unicorn, no, Dirty Unicorn, sorry, Dirty Unicorns. Um, there were just so many different team of developers that would just build these custom ROMs and it was just so amazing to see that, you know, if there was a device that you knew the name of, there was custom ROMs built for that phone. So if you wanted to keep it on stock Android and kind of, you know, avoid voiding your warranty, but then you would stay stock. But if you were, but if you're anything like me, which I consider myself a flashaholic, then uh, yeah, you would go ahead and try out these custom ROMs and see which one kind of uh, resonated with you. As um, each developer group pretty much had a different focal point as to what they were aiming for with their version of Android. And like I said, their custom ROM of Android pretty much like um, told you who they were and what they were about. I mean, you would find anything. And, and, and it wasn't just stock Android, even though that was the end goal back in the day, was to take a lot of these phones like HTC and Samsung and just, you know, put a vanilla stock Android experience on them. Um, they even ported over um, user interfaces from newer model phones. And what I mean by that is, is this was especially prevalent with Samsung, was like, um, if you had the Samsung Galaxy 2 Epic 4G touch like I did back in the day, and then there was um, features and stuff that was brought into the Galaxy S4, there was a developer who would actually take the best features of uh, what was found in the Galaxy S4 and port them over in a TouchWiz based ROM for the uh, Galaxy S2. So you didn't really have to go worrying about running off and getting the latest uh, Samsung Galaxy S device when there was um, stuff ported over uh, from the newer Galaxy phones. And this is stuff that, you know, again, developers uh, wanted to bring to everybody, which was a nice touch. Um, and Again, like I said, like you know, there's a whole lot of developers who really bust their butts to to make this happen. And uh, one of the things that I really loved doing when making these videos was shouting out the developer who made the custom ROM because I wanted them to get the exposure, I wanted them to uh, to get the, the recognition because obviously it is their ROM. It's not wasn't my ROM. I was just making a YouTube video showing it. It was their 
their their their baby their project and um of course these developers accepted donations for their builds because they could not sell android but anybody who wanted to show you know like like a thank you would give them a donation and uh, i would always make sure that the developers got the credit for it and the link to their profile on xda so they can you know get a donation if someone wanted to donate to them but in all i mean flashing custom roms was very fun of course there was some dangers to it like flash burning a device to hard bricking it um, but those things you had to really know what you were doing and read up and make sure you understand what you were dealing with but it was a great time and it was really awesome to take old devices and make them new again just by putting a custom ROM. So if you guys enjoyed my video take, smash the like button to let me know that. Uh, if you guys found uh, the channel informative, uh, subscribe. We'd really appreciate that. Turn on all notifications. And as always, peace.